and then go to the presentation mode and the small And okay, and we'll start now. And this week we're going to cover uh, marks and uh, channels again, two new concepts. And but this is actually, and the part is things actually getting more interesting in terms of we're getting actually discussing the actual violations. So last week. And we talk about the analysis framework, which contains what, why, and how. And so it looks like this. And so what is about the data. So we talk about uh, the different data types. And okay. And different data types, data set types, even attribute types. and. The data would have impact in terms of how the validation should look like. So the what has impact on the how, and then so is the why. So why is what we covered the last week. The what last week is about, um, why user want to find out what, why the user are using validation is usually want to find something out from the data. And then we talk about different task abstractions. And it is a little bit abstract, which I can appreciate. And hopefully it becomes more concrete when we see the examples, for example, later on, when we talk about table validation. And finally is the how part. And the how is actually, how do you actually create the validations to fit the data type and also meet the requirements or show what user want to see. And also we introduced this term called idiom, which is like the guidelines when you design the validation. So the thing is, say the idioms itself is not like rules. It's not hundred percent and strict, or and it's not always correct. In some ex some circumstances, it might not apply, but it should work in most cases. Okay, and just very quickly, we've seen this and picture a few times by now. So this is the what picture and shows the different data types, data set types, and then different attribute types. So we're gonna come back to, we're gonna use these different terms and throughout the module and hopefully starting to kind of make sense to you now, for example, what is item and attribute. And so this is actually what we covered uh, last week, we focused on the the why in terms of what user want, why user want to use validation, and we divide it into the actions and targets. And the action is what user do, and targets is what user looking for. And uh, explain and the actions. You have three levels, and so. So first level is analyze level, so it can have either consume or produce. And so consume is mostly looking at the validations, try to find something, whereas produce is actually adding things to the validation itself. And these two are not an exclusive, and you could do both. You could produce something, and but wow, and while well, you do some consume, but then under consume you have different and purpose of consume. And you can have this discover, which is try to find something. You have present, which is already know the answer. You try to show the results to someone else. And finally, enjoy. Enjoy means you're not doing this for any serious purposes. It's your, for your personal entertainment. Nope. OK, and then we talk about search in terms. So search is one level under analyze. And no matter which you pick, either consume or produce, or either one type of consume, you always have search involved. Then depends on whether you know what you're looking for. So that's the target no and target unknown. And whether you know where the items is in the validation. 
And so that's the location node and location unknown. You have these four different types. And just depends on the nature what you what the kind of search user is performing. And you would have to design the validation differently. So that's it's four different names. Yeah, and I just want to repeat again. So and for this module, you have to use these words or terms specifically in the way we can't we define here. And for example, Example: the locate means the type of search that you know the target, but you don't know where that it is in the validation. So we can't just use locate as a general sense in the English, normal English, how that's how do you use locate. Okay, and finally, under the action, you have query, and this is including and what you're looking for. So basically, you have the search. And the query is what you search for. And you could say identify. And in this case, you search for individual items. And you could be doing compare. So this is more general. Could be compare overall trends or can, could you compare the groups. And finally, you have summarize. Summarize is something like the catch all category. So something that's not identify or compare, you can put into summarize. But usually summarize is about something about the entire data set. Okay, and then we have this right hand side, which shows the target. Then by defini by definition, it says what the user is looking for. And the user might be looking at all the data set. And the one look user looking at all the data set, it can say looking for trend, outliers, or features. And so trends is quite easy and is up increasing, decreasing, or some other patterns. And outlier again itself is quite easy to understand the concept. Something doesn't fit on overall. And but it is something under all the data because you need to have to look at all the data to find out what is outlier. In the sense, if you don't have these black spots and you only have this like a yellow orange dot, and it's not possible to tell whether this one is outlier or not. You have to look at the entire data set and then make sense say this one is not part of the larger groups so that becomes outlier and finally we have features again so anything that's not trend or outliers can be and put under here okay and then the second type of target is attributes so when you look at the entire data set, it usually has multiple attributes, for example. And when you look at the supermarket data set, there are many attributes about different products. You have its profit, have its weight, has its name, has its cost, has its category, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes you're looking at only one or more attributes, not look at the entire data set. Actually, this is probably more common. And at least the examples we have seen so far, it's very rarely you have to look at the entire data set or including all the attributes. You more usually more focus on one of um, or a few attributes here. And so if you look at only one attribute, you can look at the distribution of the attributes, or you look at the extreme values in this case, the minimum or the maximum values or the largest values, for example. And you can look at multiple attributes. And then in this case, and you can look at the dependency. So basically, if you look at multiple attributes, you can uh, look at the relationship between these two attributes. And you can look at dependency. So yeah, sure. whether, I like it. Uh, whether one attribute changes or depends on the other attributes. Okay, and the correlator is a little bit different in the sense, and the two attributes might increase or decrease together, but that doesn't necessarily mean one attribute is dependent on the other. So this is like a broader category dependency is one subcategory of correlation, and then similarity. And finally, for the targets, we have some kind of patterns or things user might be looking for. These are specific to the type of data. And for the network data, because you have these connections between the items or the entities, 
then you can look at for different patterns, for example, a pass or star shape or circle. And these are unique to network data because these and does not exist in other type of data. Then also unique to the spatial data, which is usually the map. And you can look at the shapes and the areas and other things which are unique to spatial data. Okay, so that's kind of quick go through what we did cover the last week. And obviously in terms of the actual framework, and the last part is the how, is how do you create the violations based on the what and why. Okay, and this is what we're going to be covering from this week song. And but uh, before we actually introduce specific validation techniques from the simple ones, for example, bar chart, line chart, and we're going to talk two more concepts which are actually very important, and these kind of underlines all the different validation techniques. So these are the markers and channels. We're going to talk about what are they again they have different types sorry just and so many different types and this is probably the most important thing is in terms of the effectiveness so you can use markers and channels to represent your items and attributes but they are not equally effective some are more effective than others so these what it depends on two things you probably already guessed that it depends on the type of data which is what and also the analysis task, which is the why. So you have to choose the most effective markers and channels, depends on the data and the task. Okay, so we're going to see more concrete examples very soon. Okay, and you probably can also hear this word quite often and something called visual encoding, or sometimes I'll call it visual mapping. So what it does is it maps data to the graphics. And so the data is usually attributing the data and the graphics could be things like say size, color, position, etc. So this is essentially what data validation is. The data validation map data to some graphical attributes. Okay, and so for example, you can map a quantitative attribute. If you don't remember, these are usually just numbers. For example, at the amount of sales to the lens. So that becomes a graphics. So you use the lens to represent and sales. So that's one of the visual encoding. And then you can use an X coordinates to represent the category type. So this is like you have a bar chart, something like this. Okay, and so this gives you and this validation. So here, the y-axis represents sales, and it's mapped to the lens or the position of these bars. And then the x-axis maps to the type of data or the category of the product. So you have these three bars represent three different categories of products and say you can have different uh, mappings which give you different realization and for example if you still want just want to show sales and the product you can represent them differently okay so for example, this is uh, another way. So instead of using a bar to represent sales and you're using a dot to represent this, sorry, instead of using bar to represent product and you're using dot to represent product. So now each product instead of the bar is each dot. And sometimes, obviously these two variations are different and sometimes one works better than the other. It depends on the specific task. Okay. And you can add more information into this validation. And but 
So in this case, we already used X and Y positions, and then we have to use other visual attributes if we want to add more information. So for example, if we want to include in the categorical attributes, so as we said before, these represent the bar or dots, each represents a different product. But if we want to include category information as well, then we have to use color, which is a third visual attribute. So in this case, we have the furniture as the red color and the IT product as a blue color. Then we can use that one. Okay. And can I ask someone say, if I want to add another attribute, again, so I have to think of another visual attribute I can use to represent that attribute or visual uh, element. And can one think of any other things what I can potentially use to represent one more attribute? Anyone? So maybe line. Line. And um, okay. So it's it's potentially we can use line, and but the, the line itself would repl replace the dot to represent each product. And then it, by doing that itself, it doesn't give you any extra attributes that you can to represent new information. And anyone else want to have a go? Maybe use a different shape instead of circles, use like a square or triangle. Yes, exactly. So that could be one thing we can do. We can still change the shapes of each dot. And certainly would, you can use that to represent another one. So in this particular case, we're going to use size and to represent one last attribute, which is called profit. Uh, the reason we're going to use in, uh, size is because profit is a quantitative one, basically it's a number, and it's a little bit difficult to represent number with shapes. So instead, we're just using size. So the larger the size, the larger the profit. Okay. And then if I have as we said before, if we want to represent another one, if it's categorical, and for example, representing which area these products are sold the most, then the shape could be a good option for that. Okay, and essentially, an old data validation is just made up of marks and channels. Okay, marks represents the items in your data set. So if you have 10 products in your data set, then you would have 10 marks in the validation. So the more marks you have, and the more you have in the validation. And in this previous example, the mark, we can either call them the bars or the dot, or in this case, circle. Yeah, these are for the marks because we only have three products. So we have three bars or three marks. Yeah, you can change the channel, but the number of the mark doesn't change because it's always the number of products. Professor? Yeah? Uh, what if uh, we have uh, uh, like quantitative values on both the axes? What would yeah. be more? Okay, and we're gonna, I think a very, very good question. So. We're going to come, come to that very soon. The question was, in this case, we had one quantitative and one categorical, but what if both is quantitative? So you can use two positions. Um, actually, so if we look at this one, uh, we already have two quantitative values. One is the y-axis, the other one is size, which is the uh, profit. So you can have many different options and we're gonna talk about this very soon. Okay, mark is basic. Yeah. Okay, and we still maybe talk about mark for now, which is used to represent the number of products or items in your collection. And these are classified according to special dimensions and you can have zero dimension mark, which is point. So 
these are points, and the main difference is these does not, and in theory, they don't have sizes. That's why they call this ray D, zero D, sorry. But it does have an X and Y positions, that's for sure. And then it cannot change sizes because it's zero D. We already just talked about it has no sizes. And in theory, it should not have a color as well or shape because if the thing does not have any size, which is very small, and it doesn't, it cannot really represent with color or shape, but in reality, it probably can still, even because you have to have a physical size to actually draw a point. And then we have the 1D mark, and which is a line. Okay. And so these are the exact lines, and there's nothing really special of them. The only difference is in here, we're going to be using a line to represent an item in our data collection. So this is might be easier. You can say each dot is a product, and I have these six products. Whereas using line, you can also say one line is a product, and if I have six products in my collection, then I have six lines. And each line, how that is drawn, will be depend on the property of the products you want to show. For example, it depends on the, I don't know, the profit, the cost, et cetera, et cetera. And the lines doesn't have to be straight, can be curved as well. But the only thing you have to remember here is that line is 1D mark. That means you only have one dimension. So you can only change the length of the line to represent something. You can't change the curvature, like I said, the shape of the line to represent something else. That makes it a different type of mark. And it will be put under, say, the 2D mark, which is area. And so the areas, and you can have, say, different sizes for sure. But also you can have different patterns as well. So these are, say, you can look at the shape of this one, which represents one item that much more complex. And you can easily change the size of the, an area mark to represent something. But you can also, for example, divide it into different sub areas and color or size them differently to represent multiple attributes. Uh, we're going to talk about them later. And uh, finally, and we have 3D marks in the sense, and you can use 3D shapes to represent an item. So for example, instead of using a dot or a line, you might use a 3D cube or 3D sphere to represent one product. And then on the sphere or the cube, we can draw other attributes you want to show about data. And this is possible in theory, and but usually, in practice, it's rare. And the reason, because using 3D and say mark can have some negative impact on the, how, how well people can see the data and which we'll discuss a little bit later. <clears throat> okay. And the next one is the channels. And if you remember in previous slides, we said, and the graphics or the data validation is just made up of markers and channels. So we talked about marks already. These are different things. And now we're going to move on to channels. As it says here, the channels control the experience of mark. And it's independent of the mark's dimensionality. Okay, so let's see some examples. For example, and for the points, in theory, you can't have shapes, sorry, you can't have shapes or color, or, but you can definitely have position of the shape. So the horizontal position or the vertical position, or both. And these change the appearance of the point mark. And you can also have color. So for example, you can change the color of the line to represent an attribute of the data items. So the color makes different mark look, uh, appear differently. 
So that's what it means. It changes or controls the appearance of the mark. And that's usually used to represent some data attributes about the data. And the example we saw before, we can use the color to, if each line is representing one product, we can use the color to represent the category of the product. Or shapes. So you can change the shapes of the mark. And this is something, uh, yeah, and you need to be aware. So if you want to, you cannot change the shape of a point or a line. So shape is a concept only associated with or applicable with 2D items or 2D. So in that sense, you have to have a area mark before you can use shape of the mark to represent something. I mean, this something, I guess, a little bit pedantic, it's not says, uh, there's nothing really is to stop you to use shapes for anything. You can easily change between, for example, a point and is something very common and you can, people easily switching between say, a point mark and shape mark when they say decided okay i'm going to using say the size of the point to represent some attributes as well and that becomes a shape attribute and so become a 2d mark okay and you can use tilt so how much towards the right to represent some value and finally size of the uh, mark. So all these are examples of channels and each of them can be used to represent one attribute. So they change how the items looks, but they don't change number of items. So if you have different lengths, the marks will look different. Or if you have different area of volumes, the same mark would look different, but it's still just one mark. And the general idea will be and you pick a mark and then you pick which channel of the mark you want to change and use that change to represent the values or the attributes of the data and depends on how many attributes you want to present then you need, need and you need to use multiple channels so if you have only one attribute you want to present then you just need to use one channels but if you want to have show three attributes and you have to choose three uh, three channels, then that becomes a little bit more difficult, depends on the markers you use. Okay, I'm gonna again look at this uh, example, which we already saw early on in a previous slide. So we're gonna still just going through these examples again, and but use the two kind of terms we just learned and the markers and the channels. Ah, so first, and I just want to say again, so the markers map to the data items. So if you have 10 products in your, and in your data collection, then you should have 10 marks in the validation. And the channels map to attributes. Depends on how many attributes you want to show. Each attribute needs its own channel and you can't represent two attributes in the one channel, so it's going to be confusing. Okay, let's have a look at this. And this for this first picture, and can anyone tell me what is the mark here? Is the product? Okay, so the product is the item. So product is coming from the data set. And in, which, in the data set, each row is an item. So the product is the items. But what is product represented by in this chart? Which Mars. one? Sorry? Mars. Yeah, exactly. So in this case, and the mark is these bars because each bar represents one uh, product. And uh, in this particular case, I, can I just call them lines? And so line is a 1D mark we discussed earlier. 
And in this also, in this particular case, only the length of the line or the height of the line represent attributes. The width of the line doesn't represent anything in the sense. So this is not a 2D shape. It's only 1D mark. And so that's quite a line. OK. And uh, so, OK. So maybe the next question is about the channel and attributes. So what attributes are represented here? Sales. Sales, yeah. Any other attributes? Product. Yeah, so exactly. So we have two attributes. One is sales. The other one is product, or maybe say the actual name of the product. So just basically says these are three different products. That's all it can say. OK. And what is the channel used to represent these attributes? OK, so we have these two. So what is the channel that used to represent sales? Anyone? Okay, I'll give you some. Windy can... graphics. Sorry? Is it windy graphics? Okay, windy graphics. graphics. I'll give you some ideas. So these are the, some examples, what we call channels. So they're including position, color, shape, tilt, or size. These are not exhaustive, but these are some examples of channels that you can use to represent. Position, I Using suppose. length, size, size. length. Position. Yep. Length. Okay. Someone says using the lens to represent sales. Yeah, I think that's very close. And Or in some sense, it's the vertical. Essentially, that's the Y position, right? The Y coordinates of the bar to represent sales. You can say it's the lens of the bar, or you can say the probably actually the lens of the bar is better. OK, and then what do we use to represent the different product? Anyone? No. So how can we? Color. Color. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't quite. Color. There are bars. Size of the bars. Size of the bars. And uh, no, so I think someone said size of bars, but we're really talking about product. The size bars say this is a tall and medium and small. That's used to represent the sales, right? Uh, Point, horizontal axis, position, horizontal axis, yeah. points. So the reason we can see these are, okay, we know these are different products because the X positions are different. This is the left, the middle, and right. That's the way we know. So here we're using the X position to represent different products. You can imagine I might have other products and can put in further, and they have different X and coordinates. So in a sense, you can say we're using the vertical position or the length of the bar to represent the cells, and then using this horizontal position or the X, X, X position to represent and the different products, which is a categorical attribute. OK, and then, yeah, the, these are things we're going to come back to a little bit later in the sense depends on the attributes you want to present the type. So the sales is quantitative and the just the different product is categorical in the sense you cannot do any computation or order product natively. And this affects the channels you can should be using. OK. And um, Let's see if we, let's try again on this second one. Okay, so maybe let's say, and can anyone tell me what is the items here in this second picture? The you know points. points. Points, okay. So that's the difference between uh, marks and the items. So the items, again, is always come from the data, whereas the marks is what you see visually. 
So each mark will represent one item. So again, what is the item? IT. IT. Uh, no, no, we talk about this picture. We haven't, we don't really have the, the IT yet. We talk about the second one. Undeclared. This type of products. Perhaps. The products. Yeah. Products. So, and basically, if we look at this picture, the items didn't change at all compared to the first one. It's still, still representing three products from your data collection. Okay. What changed is the marks. So what is the marks now? Point. Point. Yeah. Very good. Points. Yeah. So we're still representing these three products, but they're just using a different mark. Instead of using line or bar, we're now using points. Okay. And then let's say this is still the sales and this is still products didn't change so what are the attributes in this we want to show in this validation sales and product itself same as previous one okay someone says same as previous one anyone is everyone agree with that not specified here not specified here okay that's also correct and so I really should put the labels on the axis, and but it is the same as previous one. So the Y axis represents sales and the X axis represents and products. So again, the attributes comes from the data set itself and it doesn't change. Even the validation changed, the attributes doesn't change. And usually if you want to show the attributes, they don't change with the validation either unless you want to change the attributes I want to show. So in this case, the attributes is still and sales and products. And then next one, uh, ah, so what is the channel here then? The shape of dots. The sh Okay, someone say the shape of dots. And uh, uh, No, it's same as the position. previous one. It's vertical position and horizontal position. Okay, and someone say it's the same as previous one. You use basically the X and Y axis or the horizontal and vertical position to represent your attributes. Anyone else? No? Okay, so I might go with this, with the second one. So the, the first person, I think someone said use the shape, but here each dot is a circle and but that doesn't represent any particularly attribute from the data set. So the circle doesn't really tell you, for example, whether it's a different type of product or whether they had lots of sales or not. So that's a, not a channel we use for this in this validation. Potentially you might be able to, but here we didn't. And but we're still using the Y position or the horizontal position to show the amount of cells, if it's two cells. So this one has medium, this one has more, and this one has less. And again, the X position is used to show the product. Again, different X just means different product. We can't really tell exactly what it is unless we have the labels on the X. Okay, and we said mark is a point. And then we have two channels. Again, is the vertical and horizontal position. And these are used to show the two same attributes. Okay. And so if we compare to these two violations, they're very simple. And the data itself did not change in terms of items and attributes that you get the same as the first one. And, but the marks changed from the line or the bar to the point. But the channel didn't change. You still use the same X and Y position. Yeah, I think we are getting there. This is uh, slightly a quick, com quick yeah. question. So sorry to disturb you. Why is it different? The bar chart you know, showing a linear going uh, negative downwards, and then the dotted is like the middle one's up. Oh, okay. Um. So the question is why this one is like at the high, medium, low, and this one is medium, high, and low. So that's, and it's decided by the ordering of these bars, and somehow it just, just changed here. Uh, 
it's just in this particular example for no particular reason or not really used to that to show anything here i'm sorry not a very good answer basically it's not really representing anything here in terms of the order of the excess on the product on the excess okay and uh, let's look at the third example now and very similar to this one okay again what is the item anyone excuse me the product team uh, furniture and it furniture and it furniture okay so that's might be a bit confusing so here the furniture and the it is meant by meant to represent the category or the type of products so some products are furniture some other products are it that's what this color is for so you can see the red one represents furniture so you have these two products they are furniture and this one is blue that means it's an it product but we don't know exactly what it is okay and my question is say what is the item isn't it still sales and products okay someone says sales and products still a point no no it's sales and products itself sales and products and someone say point no it's point is the mark yes products. very good yes and it's, it's this item is sales and products. The uh, point is the mark, and the furniture and IT will be markers, though, I guess. Mark by color. Uh, I think the furniture and IT is our channels. Item is the category. Okay, okay, very good. I think you actually start to thinking now. Okay, and so, as I said, and the items and attributes always come from the data, for example, your spreadsheet. In this case, the items is the three product you want to present or show in the validation. Again, this is the same as before. That part didn't change. The item didn't change. So let's say this is product one, two, and three. And these are still the same three products. Maybe I should show that. OK. And then, uh, so here, if we want to represent each mark, we're still using point. So we can still say the mark is point. So the item itself is not the point. The item will be the product. And the mark to represent them is the point. Okay. And you probably expect it now. Uh, so what is the attribute shown here? And let's say the two axes still represents the X still the product and the Y still the sales. So what are the attributes being shown here? Sales and product. The difference okay. uh, between furniture and IT. Okay. Anyone else? So someone says sales and product, and someone else says it's furniture and IT, which we call this so furniture and IT, which is a category of the product. Anyone else? No? Okay. I think both are correct. All these are the attributes being shown here. And so first, um, you have the X position as the product, the Y position as the sales. These two didn't change. So we still have those two and channels to represent the attributes. So the channel is the X and Y position and the attribute you present is the product and sales. And then finally, we are using a third channel, which is called color. Color is a visual attribute to represent a third attribute, which is the type of the, or the category of the product. So it has a value of even either furniture or IT. It might has any other, uh, has more values for that particular attribute. So this is a one new attribute, yeah? Uh, could you like uh, tell the what actually attribute means in the visualization? Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. So the attribute itself, 
is does not have any visual. Okay, and let's maybe I'll show you a maybe I'll show a simple example. Let's say last maybe let's look at the car data set, right? So that's something everyone is familiar with. Uh, do I have the car data set? I'm just looking for the Oh, I didn't have the data set here. Hmm, where did it go? Okay. Uh, I'm just opening up the spreadsheet. Takes this slightly a little bit of time. Okay. Oh, too bad. And can you see the spreadsheet? Yes, Professor, but the text is barely visible. Okay, yeah, I'm mean, making it a bit bigger. Okay, and so this is the example we've seen before, and we did that in the first couple of weeks. We did some analysis. Okay, so this is the data, or the we want to, or uh, Okay, the spreadsheet itself is a data and it's made up of the items, which are the different rows. And then each item, which is a car model, has different attributes. So these are, say, the type of the car and retail price, engine size, cylinder number, etc., etc. Yeah. And then when you try to visualize, you usually need to decide um, what items you want to include in the visualization and then what attributes you want to see in the visualization for example you if you're only interested in the and uh, the cost of the car then you're probably not going to include including and the type or the weight because these are not relevant so these are only two attributes i'm interested in okay and then go back to the slides so this is the item, which is say what model of the car you are interested in to show what the car the model you are interested in in the analysis. So you might say I'm interested in every single model in my data set, or you only say I'm only interested in the models from say Audi. That's both okay. So that decides the items that's going to be shown in the visualization, right? So if you only pick Audi, you have much less number of items, whereas if you go for the entire data set, you have much larger number of items, okay? So this is depends on the why in terms of your analysis task. So the analysis task will tell you what are the relevant collection of items you should show in the visualization, yeah. And then similarly, and you, oh, where's my mouse? Uh, okay. And you need to decide what attributes you want to show in the validation. Okay. So go back to this one. You might only interested in the cost or the price of the cars. And so these are the only two attributes you are interested in. And in some other cases, you might interested in the fuel efficiency of the car. So you might look at the city MPG and highway MPG, and maybe some other attributes, for example, the weight of the car, or maybe engine size, okay? Again, so what attributes 
you want to show individualization depends on your analysis task. So you might want to show everything and um, individualization if you can, in the sense, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for yet. I'm just looking for general patterns. Then you might include even more attributes. So in the sense, the what attributes to show is again decided by the analysis task, which is why. Okay. So these can change. And the ones you pick the items and attributes you want to decide, or you want to show, then you decide how to represent them, represent them. And that comes in the mark and channels. So for the products, you can decide them to represent as um, bars or dots or some other shapes or even 3D shapes. Similarly, and for each different car models, you might decide, OK, for each car, I'm going to represent as a dot or maybe as a bar or as a circle or as a line, et cetera, et cetera. Professor? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned in the spreadsheet that, you know, um, uh, according to our task of analysis, we can actually pick up uh, uh, any attributes we want to represent, right? Yeah. So uh, when it comes to items, how are we supposed to select them? Like, you know, I'm really getting confused between item and attributes. Um, okay. Could you give a quick example of uh, item as well as corresponding attributes? Okay, so I thought I said that already. So here, if you look at this spreadsheet for the car data set, that's the data set. And can, any, can anyone tell me, say, what is the items in this data set? The vehicle name, such as Aura MDX. Oh, yeah, very good. So uh, each, basically, each usually is a row, each different model. Uh, is an item. So this is like a one thing. If you if you have to think about this, is these are like the one physical thing. So this Audi A4 1.8 T 40R is one car, and uh, this BMW is a different car, and this is Acura is another car. So these are like one thing, which is the item. Yeah, and right. so once yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then once you know what item this is, and you can see the attribute for the, usually if this item is the row and then attributes will be the column. So these are the things or the properties of the items. So for each thing you have cost, you have weight, you have fuel efficiency, and these are the attributes. Okay, um, this is probably the most important thing you need to understand. And before you can actually kind of analyze validation, and this is a way you can see later on to decide what makes a good validation. But first, you understand what being shown, what the channel and then the markers are used. And hopefully, I explain that to a certain extent. So just come back here, and we can say the oh, sorry, we say that the marker is pulled. Again, so the items and attributes, item didn't change compared to the previous two. We're still showing three products, but attributes changed a little bit in the sense we still have the product and sales. Those are the same attributes as before, but now we have a new attributes called the furniture and IT. So I think it might be easier if I show you the example. Okay, let me. Close this one. Professor? Yeah? Yeah, in the last visualization, uh, the size will be also representing another attribute, right? Yes, that's right. Very good. I think you got it. Uh, okay. Okay. And so this is, again, just to help you understand the examples a bit better in the context and so ah okay so this is not exactly the same as the one we're using here here in the validation we're showing products but i think this is close enough so what showing here is actually different orders each row 
which is one order, which is the item, which is slightly different, but then you can have these different columns, which represents the attributes. Then you can have the, in terms of the product name, which maybe is this one here. So we have many different products that are being sold. And we can have the sales, which is another attribute we represent here. These are different values of the sales, some are higher and some are lower. And in this particular case, we rep want to represent John? a new one, which is called... Yeah, don't read your lead. Uh, So this one is called the category. So it just says the type of product. That is a new, this is another, a third attribute of the data. So in this time, in this case, you can have office supplies. I'm not sure if you can see that's big enough. And okay, you can have furniture, you can have technology, which is similar to the IT we have here. Yeah. So that itself is just a new attribute called category, as this represent here. And here we need to use a new channel to represent the attribute. In this case, we use the color. So the color is used to represent the, uh, the category or the type of product. We only have two values of that particular attribute here. Could be more, as we've shown here. So you just say you might have office supply as well. As a third category. Okay, and let's do the last one. Hopefully, by now you're an expert on this now. And can I start start with what is the item? Sales and products. Sorry, can you speak up a little bit? I couldn't quite hear you. Sales and products. Okay. So someone says items is sales and products. And um, anyone else? Name. The sales uh, and the product types. Okay, sales and product types. Anyone else? Okay, so I would say the sales and products and uh, here we say product types are not item. These are the attributes about the product you want to show. In terms of actual items, is just the straight product. In the sense... Professor? Yeah. Uh, if the graph resembles the spreadsheet that you just mentioned yeah. uh, in front of us, then name could be the uh, like item, the name which you mentioned, the, the column which was in the middle of all entries. Um, yeah, I think uh, um, maybe it's just a like a, a mistake from my side. Actually, I think this one is better be called, for example, pro, um, I think the product is just what they use in the data set. I think, uh, uh, where is the product they called? Ah, yeah, so this is really just a product name. And so the items really is about how many things are shown in the data, sorry, in the validation and, sorry, again, let's try, let me try it again. So the item is really about how many things you want to include them in the analysis, and what are they? And uh, in that sense, um, we still have these three products. That's the item. So in the sense, uh, all the product names, all the uh, individual products becomes the items and uh, all the rest becomes the attributes, right? And can you say it again? So all the individual items uh, become uh, individual product names becomes uh, the item 
and uh, rest of all the values like uh, the positioning and uh, the color and size becomes the attribute uh okay okay size could be uh, size no, could be size channel, be channel. Right? size will be channel size color and the position will be channel uh, say the it furniture and the sales count everything will become attribute now yes yes that, that's that's closer that's better that's better and okay um i think is any way i can draw something over here or You need to edit this slide, yes. professor. Yeah, professor. Um, will it be right to say that maybe the item is the numeric value? Uh, for example, uh, if it's three on the table, mm -hmm. that's the item that we are trying to represent in the graph. And it, it's not always, I mean, certainly number is one of the attributes, but it's not always number. For example, the attribute and can be product name and then in that case it's not a number it's some text so professor how are we supposed to decide uh, when to choose product name as uh, the attribute rather than being an item okay so and um, product name so the question is say when the product name becomes one attribute or sometimes becomes an item okay. exactly exactly so Product name is always an attribute. It is never an item. Uh, so an item in here is a row. So it will say it's office supply. I don't know, maybe made or sold in Houston, United States. That's the customer who bought it, etc. And items is all these things together is an item, if that makes sense. All these different attributes. And the product name, which is this one here, is just one of the attributes. It's only, product name is always an attribute. So if we look at these dot here, each dot would represent a row, which is a collect of information, a lot of them, if that makes sense. So it start in including information like discount. Uh, what is this? Uh, number of records, order date, order ID, postcode, and manufacturer, et cetera, et cetera. Profit, quantity, et cetera. All these things together is one item. You mean and to say all the attributes together um, contributes to be an item? Yes, yes. So one item including all the possible attributes. So product will always just be one of the possible attributes. If that makes sense. So, so that's what I'm saying here is the, let me get the mouse back. The items and it says which of these items you decide to include in the validation. So you could include, decide I can only include in this item, or you may say I want to include these two, or including this one, and this one, and this one, all right? So the item change like that. So depends on which items you want to, which products you want to include in, in the validation can potentially change in terms of numbers and which are they, yeah. But each item itself includes all the attributes. It's not just product name. Product name is not an item. It is just one of the attributes of an item. Yes? Can we say Mm. Attributes as profit ratio. If, if we take this Excel sheet of data, mm. profit ratio, category, city, country, customer name, discount, all these are attributes, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So every yeah, and the values in these uh, uh, in these rows are uh, considered uh, to be items. Yeah, yeah. 
exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's yeah. maybe easier, which is, I guess I tried to be saying is, and each row is a item and each column is an attribute. So any row yeah. is an item and any column is an attribute. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is uh, something quite confusing, but that's very important and probably very important things you need to understand. Let me just go back one slide. Uh, where was it? Oh. Markers and channels. Okay, okay. Ah, sorry. This is still the same slide. Okay, I didn't really any have any better slides. And so the items and attributes are only concerns about the actual data, which is a spreadsheet. You can just think of a spreadsheet as a data. And once the items and attributes are decided, you have the markers and channels. Markers and channels only concerns about the visualization. And the markers and channels can change. And then you have different visual representation. But the items and attributes can remain the same. So you just represent the same information in different way visually. So that's how you show create different validations. And so we can see, say, this one and this one shows exactly the same uh, items and attributes. So we have these three items or so three products. And for each product, we're showing the sales and product name. Let's call this just to abuse and so avoid confusion. And these are two are just different one to map to the different marks. And actually the channel is actually the same as well, the X and Y positions. Uh, professor, I had a question. Mm. What is the significance of having a channel? I understood what an attribute means. Uh, why do we need marks? And an observation is an item. But what is the significance of having uh, knowing a channel? And the channels, it says, channel is used to represent attributes, right? So you had marks, marks which will show you the items. You can see how many items are there. That's all it does. You can, if you look only at the marks, you can only see there are three products shown in the validation, but you don't know, say, what their sales values or what the product name or the type of the product. These are done by using, say, the colors or the positions. These are the channels. That's why we need channels to show these attributes. And uh, if the data is in a tabular form or in a spreadsheet, uh, you can determine the items from the rows and the attributes from the columns. Yeah. But about if it's graphically represented here, for example, if you just get a graph uh, with the bar chart or with the points, how do you establish which are the attributes and which are the items? Okay, so uh, the... The question is, how can you tell which one is item, which one is attribute? Yes, but not from uh, a tabular form. For example, if it's represented in a graph, like like the way, like this bar graph, yeah, yeah. sales and product. How can yeah. you just view the graph and uh, determine that sales or product maybe are the attributes and maybe they are the items without looking at the tabular form of the data? No, so... um. I guess, uh, maybe, yeah, okay. So, so first items is always represented by the marks and the marks can be points, can be line, can be 2D shapes. And you know, and any mark will be representing item and each individual mark is in each individual item. That's why we know there are three items in the visualization. And here we have three bars, so we know there's three products 
in the validation, if that makes sense. And then the attributes is always something visual, or sorry, the channel is always something visual about each mark. So for the bar, the visual thing could be, for example, the height of the bar, the width of the bar, the color of the bar, the shape of the bar, or the position of the bar, right? And uh, not all of them are used to represent attributes. In this case, for example, it's blue color. It's a visual channel, but the blue color itself does not really represent anything. It just need, you need to use a color, maybe make it easier to see. But the, the length of the bar actually represents something. So that becomes a channel that being used to represent the attributes. Okay, all right, thank you. Let's yeah. So, so maybe the idea would be say the channels are always there. You have say position, size, color, or lens, etc. But not all of them are used to represent attribute. So in this case, we used X and Y position, but not using say and say width or color or etc. Okay, okay. Uh, let's just one one another another try. Uh, ah. Uh, let's come back here. And so for this last picture, okay. Um, can we still again say what is the item? Does that products? Make... The three products which are mentioned. Yeah, Product okay. Point. Yeah, yeah. At least I heard a couple of students say that's the three products we've done there. That's the, the items. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think we're kind of getting there. We're almost there. And then what are the attributes being shown in this tradition? And the size. Size uh, of the sales and products. Sales and uh, products. Sales, sales and products. products size uh, and the type the furniture and it okay okay yeah okay here we again have to stick with the the general idea so the attribute are the columns from the spreadsheet right so i think everyone get that so the attribute itself doesn't have any visual so it it does how do i say it you cannot see it visually. You only can see the channels when you decide to represent attributes in a certain way. So attribute here will be product, which is X, product name, x-axis, and sales, y-axis. And then the color represents some product category or type. And there's actually one last one which is now we actually also using the size of these mark to represent one last attribute. Uh, so for example, this is used to represent say the profit of the product. Okay. And so in this case, we has four attributes represented, even one more compared to this one. This had three which are the two positions and the color. Now we had two positions plus the size and the color. So we had four attributes represented here. Okay, yeah. Um, we are a little bit behind, but I think that's okay. This is something very important um, for actually the next two courseworks. So hopefully, uh, if you still have any questions, just ask me. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so hopefully, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I do have a question. I've been holding since the first slide. Yeah. Uh, Professor, could you quickly please explain what is 2D mark? Oh, 2D mark. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so 2D mark and are basically 
shapes or yeah maybe shapes will be a better word than area what's called area in the book i think shapes make sense to you right you can have say and triangle square rectangle circle these are different shapes so these Professor, are 2d marks could the could a pie chart be you know a 2d mark okay you mean pie chart itself as a mark mm -hmm. yeah um in a sense it's still 2d okay so this is a little bit complicated than what we are being shown here so what mm -hmm. he's suggesting is for example here we have three products instead of using a dot or circle or bar each of this is a bar chart itself okay uh -huh. in theory that's possible and still that will be still counted as 2d because it only has x and y dimensions for the mark itself it does not have a z or third dimensions so it is not one of these 3d shapes that will still be counted as a 2d mark but that's the more complex ones. Does that answer the question? Yes, Professor. Yeah. Thank you so much. OK. OK, let's just go through this. OK, um, OK. Uh, this, again, can be a bit confusing, and but again, it's important and we're going to, I'm sure you will get and get, hopefully can get them across relatively easily. Okay. And so we talk about the channel. If you remember, channel is used to represent attribute. So the channel can be the size, the color, and the position, etc. And then they just give it particularly names, say, if you use a channel to represent categorical attributes, they call it identity channel. But for for me, I might just say call these categorical channel just to make it easier instead of using having to remember two other names. So say for example, you can use different shapes or different colors to represent different categorical attributes. Actually, in the examples we saw before. Uh, we use a color to represent the type of the product, which is a categorical attribute. Okay. And again, you can have some other channels which is to represent quantitative attributes like numbers. And you can use position, amount of tilt or lens. And they call this magnitude channels. Magnitude is basically just another word to say quantitative. So I can just call these quantitative channels. Yeah. So that's relatively easy. So that just says among the different channels you can represent, depends on your representing quantitative or categorical attributes, you have quantitative or categorical channels. Okay. And then the next one is actually the most important part so you can have one attribute let's say the price of your product then you can choose which channel you want to use to represent that particular attribute so what channel you want to represent the price you have the choice you can use position you can use size you can use color and any other possible channels then the question is which one will be the best channel to use to represent, say, price? And then that decides what, how good the validation is. If you choose an effective channel, then people can say easily see the price or can easily compare different prices compared to some other channels, which you can use that to represent price. But for example, made it harder to see exactly and the values of the price or compare different prices and that becomes less effective so that's the main difference between the good and not so good validations okay um, i'm gonna just start with this table here okay so all the things we have been covered so far is the goal is to introduce this list or table 
and this is probably uh, the most important things you can learn in the first 12 weeks. Okay, so we're going to go through this slowly. So we're probably not going to have time to cover everything um, of this list today because we've only got like, maybe five minutes left. So I'm going to introduce this and continue it uh, next week. Okay, so first, and this is showing the channel effectiveness rankings. Essentially, it just says rank different channels by how effective they are. So higher on the list is more effective, lower down is less effective. So this says position on common scale is the most effective channels we ever covered and on this list. And then say the volume, which is a 3D size of or the size of a 3D mark is the least effective. Okay. We can explain why that's the case a little bit later, but that's just how do you read or use this list. The things on the top are more effective and things at the bottom. Again, if you compare these two, so the lens is before or above tilt or angle. So the lens is a more effective way to represent an attribute compared to tilt to represent an attribute. So as a channel, lens is more effective than angle or tilt. That's what this list tells you. Yeah, uh, but you have these two things here. It says here use the luminance or basically gray stack scale or the amount of saturation, for example, how red the color is. They are about the same level. Yeah, not obvious one. And similarly for these two, it's about the same level. There's no big difference. So that's how you how you read this list. Yeah. And then you have two parts. So on the left side are all the channels, their effectiveness when re representing and quantitative attributes. So when you're representing numbers, basically. So in that context, so all these are used to uh, represent numbers, and this is their effectiveness. Okay, and on the right hand side are these different attributes to represent categorical, sorry, different channels to represent the categorical attributes. So like a type or the name of the product or the area that was sold, these are category attributes. And again, so these are the effectiveness from the most effective ones on the top to the least effective one at the bottom in that order. And this is only in the sense when you're representing the categorical attributes. Yeah. Uh, so for example, and color, you can see color can be both used to represent categorical attributes on this side, or say numerical ones or quantitative ones on this side. And the ranking is a bit different. Yeah. And so basically the way to use this list is say, when you need to represent some attributes from your data, then you need to decide first, is that a quantitative attributes or a categorical attributes? And if it's quantitative attributes, you probably want to be looking for some attributes from here, from the top. So these are the most effective ones and try to avoid the ones at the bottom. And if it's a categorical attributes, and you probably want to look at the attributes from this list, again, from the top ones, those are be the most effective ones to represent any categorical attributes. Okay. And, oh, let me see. Oh, just a bit slow. Okay, uh, we're gonna, I don't think we have time to go through each of these attributes in more details. Uh, we're going to continue that and at the next lesson. Okay.
and we'll just stop here now for today.